for us, the property wouldn't be the same without the field. That field is a magical entity in and of itself, and one of the main reasons that we chose this house. Nobody's making land anymore, and land is, is a magical resource. There's energy in the land and in nature that is healing. It's a stimulus for growth. It, it's good for kids to grow up on the land. It's, there's magical energy out there in the field. Oh, I was completely startled back in um, March when I was given the diagnosis of endometrial cancer. I, just, I was strong and fit and healthy, going to the gym four days a week, working out. Everything was going along fine, and this just really startled me. Before I had a chance to catch my breath, I'd had the surgery to have all the, the damaged tissue removed. Um, and I was looking at uh, a course of chemotherapy that was going to last 18 weeks. I thought about uh, how I wanted to visualize the chemo because I think when you want your body to heal, it's good to have a vision of healing. I wanted something really positive. So I started with a vision of the rainbow, which to me represented my mom's love for me. And the rainbow in my mind dissolved into a shower of iridescent rainbow colored bubbles. I decided that the, the infusion that was going to go into my body was going to be a sparkly, bubble filled liquid. And each bubble that went in was going to have a mission. And that mission would be to find a cancer cell. Once that cancer cell was found, it was encapsulated in the bubble. And the bubble had the power to convert negative energy into positive energy. Bubbles became the chariots that would carry them out into the world. And then they were to find an, somewhere in the world that needed positive energy and take that particular cancer cell, which was now positive energy cell, and share it somewhere so that my cancer could be transformed from a destructive force to a constructive force. The rainbow circle started off being my brothers and sisters. And the day before my chemo began, we were all together and they wrapped me in a big group hug. And I said, you guys are my rainbow circle. The rainbow representing the love that we have within our family. And so then as my chemo started, I started sending out an email saying, this is how the process went, this is how I reacted, this is how I'm doing. And then friends learned about it and said, could you include me? I really want to know what's going on with you too. So the circle began to grow. And then I found out that people were forwarding my emails to other people because they liked the positive image and they found that the positive image helped other people who are having difficulties of many sorts. By the time 17th and 18th treatments rolled around, my email list is 94 people. Rainbow Circle represents a very positive union of the human spirit, which is such a powerful force. It came back at me with so much love and so much support that it was like being in a water fountain where the water shoots up and you're sitting up here on top bouncing around. There was no way I could feel down because there was so much wonderful support coming in. But at the same time, my messages went out and encouraged other people to deal with problems and people within the circle could feel the energy of everyone else because there was so much strength in this circle. Where the energy came from, where the positive energy was coming from to feed this whole process, in large part was my field. There's magical energy out there in the field. And particularly when I needed it the most, it was there. I could find butterflies and flowers and birds and sunsets and great swaths of green or at one point, the Queen Anne's lace was so thick in the field it looked like a cauldron of bubbles and they, the bubbles then were growing on top of red purple clover that looked like a sea reflecting the sunset. All these things appealed to my sense of color and poetry and, and art and so I was able to translate that and put it into my emails and send that out. So without that field I don't think my emails could have been nearly as rich. When I began chemotherapy, I had a personal theory that if I drank as much liquid as I can and challenged myself to be as active as I possibly could so that my metabolism would be revved up to its maximum, then I would use up any of that chemical that went into my body that wasn't necessarily directed at the cancer. Any residue would be burned off or washed out. And so I had a partner 
here who helped me out. We walked. Um, and in the course of the four months of my 18 weeks of treatment, we covered 700 miles. Hand in hand, almost all the way. I think you have to keep a positive attitude because the only thing you do if you have a negative attitude is dig yourself a hole. And it's hard to get back out of that hole. There's no, obviously no guarantee that having a positive attitude is going to cure anybody's cancer. Very possible that this will come back and I'll have to deal with it in another way at another time. But in the meantime, I've had these four months that have been a wonderful experience. And I could have stuck my head in a hole and said, oh, poor me, and felt horrible. I wouldn't have had that, that gift. Whatever I have of my life, I'm going to give it a chance to bloom. I'm going to recognize where the sun's, how beautiful the sunset is. I'm going to feel the positive energy of everybody who's rooting for me. And I think that's, that's, you really only have two choices. You either have negative energy or you have positive energy. And it's so worthwhile to have positive energy. It's a no-brainer. Take it.